Good afternoon, good evening, good morning. This is the Wix Online meeting number 64, the April 21st, plowing through the year. As always, these meetings are being recorded for those people who are unable to be here right now, right here with all of us all together in this virtual meeting. I don't know if all together works for that, but, you know, hey, we're all here, at least in some sort of time, if not space. Uh, long introduction because we have a very short agenda, which has actually been our continuing agenda for a while. We will get to a longer agenda um, soon when we start talking about what our plans are for finishing 310 and 40, but that's a hint for the future, not to, um, not for the uh, today. So it's about time to go switch to uh, doing triage. And Bob's saying that he doesn't have audio now. So we'll see if maybe he'll just do it moot. No, that won't work very well at all. I, I, I think I have audio, but we dropped out for a minute there. All right. Well, we'll see if the recording. By the way, we all got uploaded from Link to Skype for Business, which, interestingly enough, the button that I push for launching Link still works. So I don't know if they didn't name the executable. I haven't spent the time to go figure yeah, that they, out. They didn't. It's the same XE name. Awesome. <laughs> they probably kept Global the same like and replace. we can't change the name because it will break somebody's batch file in some place and anyway neither here nor there so far it seems to be working of course we won't know until I save the recording and try to post it to YouTube which will be later in the meantime we're going to go do triage and I happen to take a peek at the bugs and went oh yeah not many bugs only one new one one new one and you opened this last or you made a comment on this last one if I said reopened right this was reopened Yes, yes. So this is typelib major mer yes version of typelib major minor versions are code in four, is in the eight. In the major versions, the middle sixteen. But it's so goofy what they chose to do there, isn't it? Completely, completely goofy. It means they're leaving another eight bits empty. Of, well, at undefined because the the, yeah, and the, and the yeah at the top, <laughs> and they don't define what they're supposed to be. Presumably zero. But boy, you know, actually saying that would be kind of nice, wouldn't it? Um, anyway, yeah. So, so the you know MSI implementation of an advertised type library uh, cannot expand the the range, the version range. Mm, what about unadvertised? Unadvertised, that's possible. Interesting. So, if you're not advertising your um, your type lib, duh, then we could remove this restriction. We could. Um, but I have to say, given the MSI definition and the fact that it's, you know, been that way for about ever, if not forever, um, I have to wonder if it's actually useful to have, you know, different restrictions on on the data. I have lost my mouse cursor because that's what happens to me. Oh, look at that. <laughs> See that? Congratulations. First try. How awesome was that? The version attribute, what am I looking at? In middle, right. So I assume that this is going to drop into the reg keys if you were to do that. So for the reg key version, we could do short, right? Right, right. That the reg key would probably support these two. Advertising does not. Does that make sense? Uh, or are yes. you thinking I, that the uh, the MSI documentation is more correct about type libs than the type lib middle deck? Well, I, yeah, the reason I recommended won't fix is because, well, mostly because, again, it's been this way forever. No one's complained. It's you know hard to see that that mixing and matching would be, you know, beneficial um, as to whether MSI got it right. Mm, yeah, you know, maybe. I mean, for a while there, they were part of Windows. So, you know, they might have had some slightly deeper insight, although this was, you know, an MSI 1.0 feature. So yeah, I doubt it. Um, 
The alternative is to go write the red keys by hand, which is not as nearly as pretty. It is not. Um, but you know, I keep coming back to the, the other thing is like the, the other thing is that advertising type is a really bad idea. So that's why I'm I'm kind of stuck on the you know in general we should mm. we should support the registry yeah. the registry format is more likely to be used than the, the type lib restriction or the advertised type lib restriction is yeah yeah so I, I if, and even if and if you did this restriction to be like yeah don't advertise your type lib <laughs> it's a really bad idea don't use a type lib table use a type lib element don't use a type lib table right right well I mean that's pretty much um, true for all com stuff. Yes. Yeah, I mean, this this data ends up as part of the the key pat the registry key. Um, so it's you know it's safe. Mm-hmm. Not even a D word limitation there. Uh-uh. I think we should take it. I'm t fine if we take it in four, but I think we should do it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So if you don't want it in three, I'm fine with that. If you just want to keep it calm in three, but if yeah. you don't want it in three, let's take it in four with my extra comment, I think. Okay. That sounds fine. All right. Let's do that. All right. I'll put it in 4.0. Yes. And worse comes to worse. We'll make sure I get it. All right. Crash during log ID. I really wish I knew what this was. Yeah. Format messages crashing. More data beyond the... No, oh, okay. Error reading page. Blah. At PDBs. Oh, they did the work to get PDBs. So there's line numbers on the end. Oh, fantastic. Um, I'd really like to s try to understand if it's, uh, so it's several different call stacks, but, you know, is it all coming from the same spot? In other words, is it log ID or is it, you know, a particular instance of log ID. I'm just going to kind of look at line 825. It is the format message call, which I guess you would expect. Yeah. And it crashed here. Oh, dependency plan package we can't. Kind of weird that that would fail. Oh, I guess we have two instances of it here. Dependency plan package and execute package complete. So that kind of answers that. Which also makes the most sense. All the log ID calls are going to be basically the same. Except with different arguments, which, you know, okay. It's not consistent. Yeah, so that kind of rules out simple stuff like, oops, one message has the wrong number of arguments. And or they have a package name that exposes something that, you know, can't be parsed. The args getting passed in are, we can find those. Yeah, there's an interesting bug here. Yeah. Deep, deep, dark, dark, deep, dark pit. Name that TV show. No takers? All right. No, now I've stopped thinking about the bug. What? what? <laughs> I'll leave it for next week. All right. Maybe somebody will come back with deep, deep, dark, dark, deep, dark. Pick. It's a fantastic show. 
I was younger, I'll give you that. So it might not be any good anymore. But when I was a kid, it was fantastic. Um, um, yeah, we're not going to pull this out here because it doesn't. It's not obvious. The args is passed in as a list. The caller is plan package begin. Try to open that real quick, see if there's anything obvious in plan package begin. And these are all wide strings, right? There's no mixing and matching here. I hope so. Actually, this is a burn. Or dependency? Dependency. Three, four, eight. It's the ID. It's the package ID. Well, that's good. I was afraid it was like going to be like some user input or something. Right? And then it'd be like, well, maybe on this one machine, they finally found a way to input user data that caused things to blow up. But it's the package ID, which means they've tested it in their own world, and they have something out there in the real world that, for whatever reason, sometimes this thing isn't correct. Hmm. It's a crash, huh? I got nothing. Yes. Thus the deep, deep, dark, dark, deep, dark pit reference. Very, very scary place that nothing comes out of. Yeah, uh, I, I think we should leave it open. I don't know what to do with it right now. Um, I don't. I don't know what to do with it. <laughs> Bob? Not me. I, I don't, I mean, I took a quick look. I don't see anything that we're doing wrong with format message. Yeah. Um, I, just, I don't know I if don't it matters that what like, standard BA matters or not. Who says the package ID being passed in? Unless, actually, you know, unless they've corrupted memory somewhere else and they've hit this. So. So, because it's moving around, let's tell them to turn on app verifier, um, particularly page heap, and see if they can see if they're actually, by turning on page heap, maybe they'll get a crash to move, and maybe it won't be in our code anymore. Maybe they're screwing up memory somewhere, or maybe we're screwing up memory somewhere else, and it just happens to be manifesting a format message. Yeah, Jacob, mm -hmm. even if they're messing with the packages, you can't change the ID of the package, and this thing's crashing on the package ID. So, so I think that's the answer thus far. Uh, we'll, we can kick it out for more info, put it in 310 for more info, and see if they can run page sheet. Because my... <sighs> I'm with you, Bob. I don't see anything that would be like, all right, well, clearly we would crash inconsistently if we did that. But there's nothing obvious that would do that. So... My hope is that they've corrupted memory somewhere else and they're just happening to crash in this space. That they're rather consistently corrupting memory somewhere that is inconsistently crashing here. So it's the same sort of memory corruption which ends up getting the same sort of crash in the times that the system decides that that's the way it's going to be. And hopefully page heap will trap the thing going, hey, you can't write there, and then suddenly it'll be like, oh, look, log ID doesn't crash. Something else crashed way earlier. That's my hope. Does that make sense? Um, uh, it's rather, it's the, first, the it's the first thing I do when you have something that looks like a memory crash that doesn't reproduce consistently. doesn't right, always work. Right. But if it works, it's the fastest way, because turning on G flags or app verifier and turning on page heap is the easiest, it's like, you know, a few minutes, unless you don't have the tools, then it's, you know, 30 minutes to go get the tools. <laughs> you right. Know, whatever. Get them, put them on, turn on, run it a bunch of times, and then hopefully it crashes. Actually, hopefully it crashes the first time. You're like, oh, we're always messing up the memory here. Right. Well, then, 
you fix that, and then suddenly this problem goes away, and you're like, oh, messing up the memory here was messing up stuff later that would sometimes be screwed. So I think that's the answer for now. And hopefully the right. bug will move consistently. Um, yeah, yeah, no, it's worth a shot. It's worth a shot. The best thing yeah. I got right now. Yeah, and if they're capturing call stacks, they're, you know, they're most of the way there. Yeah, like they, the fact that they got this far is, you know, yeah. either they know how to get mini dumps from their crashes, or I don't, I don't know what they've done, but that's good. So, yep, I don't like crashes. I don't like crashes. So, we'll to go, be good to hunt that one down if possible. Are you ready then? I think that's. Four seven three eight. I have no mouse. I saw I heard. Okay, got it. Four seven three eight. What? How is this not? This is open. All right, we have to triage this bug, but it's already open. Oh, it was open directly. All right, thanks. Don't do that, people. He assigned it to himself. Well, then we're done, right? He's gonna go fix it. He put in three nine. Well, we're not going to fix it there. Probably not. In there. I have an issue when try to run installers created three nine on eight errors. Write this. Tried Google, but I have a hard time fixing this. What is this? Failed to get s handlers for section third properties. There's not enough information to diagnose. We would know what their properties they're looking for. Because that's not found, right? Yes. Uninstalling and installing IS fixed the issue. Helpful link this. Wow. Look at that. What? All right, so IS is screwed. Wow. Okay. So that to me would suggest that something's happened to the IS configuration. These people have corrupted their IS configuration somehow, and the world's a bad place. So that the IS7 config changes, that's using, that's doing XML stuff, right? It, or is uh, that it, it's using the IS API that in the end uses XML stuff. But not the Metabase stuff. It's, yeah, this is definitely not Metabase. That's only IS6, I5. Oh, man, I don't remember now. Um, Can you do me a favor, Bob? Possibly. Yeah, good answer. Um, can you find this bug in our archive? Possibly. Uh, 3332 from SourceForge, and pop it over to um, 4, and reference this bug inside the, when we pop it up over to 4. Um, I want to, I don't want to give up on this yet in that maybe we need to harden um, this error, this, you know, not found kind of thing, um, such that we could tell the person your IIS configuration has been corrupted or, you know, like try to figure out what, what might cause it, right? And just say, yeah, your IIS configuration is hosed. Like, you know, Phil mentions that IIS is very sensitive to XML formatting, so maybe we, maybe they, you know, messed up their XML file. We can just tell them, hey, your IS is screwed up. I don't know what you did, but you messed it up, and this stuff doesn't work anymore. Seems reasonable. So I, I just I want to take a, a swing at it. Uh, I don't want to lose it. I guess is what I'm saying. And I yeah. don't think we'll do anything for three nine, but we might want to take a swing at it in three ten or in four zero. So, and then we can get rid of this bug. All right. <laughs> 
that was open directly, which is a horrible idea because we never look at it. But yeah. Oh well. Yeah, we should. Thank you, Sean. Happening. Yeah. Thank you for finding that, Sean. So, with that done, I believe we're to questions, comments for the week, things like that. Anything that people want to want around stuff and stuff and stuff and stuff. It's been a quiet week generally out there on Wix Dev. It's been interesting, a little stuff going on with Wix users, but generally quiet week has been nice since there's so much other work going on a little bit, but it's good stuff. Running, running, running. Running, running, running. All right. Going once, going twice. We have the usual suspects here, so I think we have most of the stuff covered. We all know where we're at. Sean sent another pull request. Oh, for the yeah, the, the unit testing of the Bootstrap application stuff. So I want to go look at that. That looks like it will be good stuff to have. All righty then. So I, I sent one too. Did you? Yeah, I Sean did. left a whole bunch of comments on it. I know. Yeah, so I'm waiting for you to send back the code review pull request for it. Because they didn't seem like bad comments to me. <laughs> High praise. Uh, yeah, that is, isn't it? <laughs> Does it get well, better than okay. that? No, you're right. It gets better than that. It, it gets better than that when I offer to, to give you a raise on your Wix salary. That's usually pretty good. There you go. Yeah, so. Um which I don't do anymore. I have to be careful about that around here. Um, on that note, I think we're all good. So you guys have a wonderful afternoon. We're doing a half-hour meeting. I think that's pretty fantastic right now, given where we're at. Um, like I mentioned at the beginning, we will sit down and talk about uh, the 4.0 and 3.10 timelines and stuff like that um, very soon. Life is getting better. So anyway, no worries. Things are going to happen. Uh, I guess until next time, Mark, we'll... Just keep going, trucking along. We'll see you guys next week. Bye.